Here's my top five Tom Selleck TV movies. Yeah, but his one fits him better, right? <laughs> G'day guys, this is Holy Critics signing in and as promised I'm delivering a new top 5 countdown on the man, the myth and the legend, Tom Selleck. I've been excited to do this one for quite some time now because Tom is even more criminally underrated than Sam Elliott, in my humble opinion. Both actors rose to prominence around the same time and coincidentally hit their prime starring in the very same movies. I'll expand on that in just a minute, but I first want to acknowledge what an extensive film career Tom has had. From Magnum P.I. to Blue Bloods and everything in between, there's no denying that Tom Selleck's notoriety has come primarily from his iconic, albeit small, screen roles. That's why I've chosen to narrow the focus of this video on his more overlooked works. Regardless of budget or ensemble, Tom's towering presence has always elevated even the most mediocre of pitches. Like a fine wine, his performances have matured with age, and he still continues to deliver even in recent times where lesser actors would have faded away. Hopefully this video will give you some more insight into his versatility and thus longevity as an actor we've all come to love. So. Sit back and settle in for my top five Tom Selleck TV movies. Number five. All right, so getting back to my point earlier about Sam and Tom, there was a time when their careers converged in the most epic fashion. The Shadow Riders was a de facto sequel to their first miniseries, The Sackets. While their roles do differ, both were adapted from Louis L'Amour novels, set roughly around the same time period, and are centred on the theme of brotherhood. All perfect ingredients for a classic western. The Shadow Riders begins right as the South surrenders and the Civil War ends. The Traven brothers, played by Elliot and Selleck, have found themselves on opposite sides of battle, but bear no ill will toward each other. They soon reunite to take down a common enemy who's raided their homestead and kidnapped their younger siblings. Tom Selleck chews most of the scenery in this one as the swashbuckling alpha male who backed the right side of history. It's got the ideal mix of gunfighting, horse chases, great one-liners, and of course, all that glorious facial hair. It's also quite intentional about not letting the plot get too deep or serious as that would bog down the brisk runtime. Recommended viewing for a weekend spent with your feet up by the fire and a glass of scotch in hand. Number four. I've decided to throw a curveball into this countdown with a movie you've most likely never heard of before. Divorce Wars came out the same year as Shadow Riders, which is Probably part of the reason why it was largely overshadowed, no pun intended. It's a movie that casts Tom Selleck in a completely different light. Here he plays a philandering divorce lawyer whose ironic predicament is not lost on him. His career means more to him than his stay-at-home wife played by Jane Curtin. She wants to file for divorce when she learns of his dalliance with a young law student played by Mimi Rogers. But she knows that beating him at his own game won't be easy. Thus, it sparks a divorce war, where she seeks outside counsel hoping to punish him to the maximum extent of the law. Selleck is in no way a sympathetic character here. In fact, he's quite the opposite. However, perhaps even more egregious than his behaviour is the legal system which permits such a pernicious exercise. Both parties pitted against one another for the benefit of those profiteering from it. Tom's evolution throughout the movie is quite remarkable as he transforms from a cocky chauvinist to a humble, contrite man. I found it most thematically comparable to Robert Benton's Kramer vs. Kramer. If you ever get the chance, make sure you check it out. Number 3 
It's impossible for me not to squeeze in another Western onto this list because, well, Tom has so many great ones. Case in point is Crossfire Trail, which again was adapted from the works of Louis L'Amour. And yes, I'm a total fanboy, so get out the way, quickly down under. <laughs> well, fortunately that wasn't a TV movie, so I think I dodged a bullet there. Anyway, Tom Selleck plays Rafe Corvington, an aging drifter who has nothing more to show than his trusty steed and the bond of his word. He promises his dying friend that he'll take care of his ranch and newly widowed wife, played by Virginia Madsen. Unfortunately, however, that ranch is located in bandit country, controlled by a wealthy tycoon with ideas of his own. Mark Harmon of NCIS fame plays a worthy adversary to Tom and at times almost steals the show from him. And also on the topic of ensemble cast, Madsen strikes a fine balance between strength and vulnerability. Rather than being stereotypical eye candy or the damsel in distress, she's fully independent and very incredulous of both the hero and villain. It makes for a nice trifecta of characters. Overall, Crossfire Trail delivers on all things Western. The scenic shots are beautiful, there's plenty of action across the board, the characters are extremely well developed, and it leaves you feeling satisfied following the final showdown. It's a complete package that's well worth your attention. Number 2 Now for a departure from what you might have been expecting next is the true biopic, Ike, Countdown to D-Day. Tom plays the role of Dwight D. Eisenhower who was a World War II military general responsible for the invasion of Normandy in 1944. You might also remember that he later went on to become the 34th President of the United States, but that part of his life is not the focus of this particular story. Rather, the plot revolves around the delicate planning and execution of Operation Overlord, which turned the tide of the war against Nazi Germany. Most notably is the absence of any real action or battle scenes. Normally this would be a death knell for a movie of this calibre, but the character dynamics and constant jousting between Eisenhower and his British counterparts makes for compelling viewing nonetheless. Rather than presenting the character in a brash, jingoistic way, Selleck portrays Eisenhower as a thinking man, a tactician who will not be rushed or intimidated by outside forces. An everyman who never felt more at home than when chatting with the ordinary rank and file. It's this nuanced betrayal that gives the movie authenticity, further proving how Tom Selleck can hold his own as an actor. I'd highly recommend checking it out on YouTube. Number 1 For Tom Selleck aficionados out there, my choice or rather choices for Top Spot will come as no surprise to you. Simply put, Jesse Stone is my favourite detective character, period. You see, I was too young slash non-existent to appreciate TV shows like Columbo and Kojak, where there was a strong central crime-solving character. So, my appreciation for Selick in this role is that much more substantial than it may be for those of you who are of an older generation. With that said, I couldn't simply choose any one of the nine Jesse Stone TV movies because they are all equally worthy of praise. Set in the fictional coastal town of Paradise, Massachusetts, the series follows a divorced alcoholic detective with a checkered history. His resignation from the LAPD homicide division is a constant sore spot. But he soon learns that even a backwater like Paradise has some skeletons of its own. Stone, of course, is always up to the task, conducting himself in a cool, calm and collected manner. Each movie presents a new challenge for Jesse, whether it be internal politics within the department, problems at home, cold cases, serial killers and mafia connections linking all the way to the top. Tom Selleck is the only actor I can think of who can pull it all off without coming across like a John Wick or John McClane for that matter. Do yourself a favour and buy the box set because this series is binge heaven.